Good morning and welcome to Westwood Baptist Church. We are here to worship God and I'd love to welcome you wherever you are today. Join with us as we share in God's love, as we worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me read to you from Ephesians chapter 4. This is the word to the church, to you and to me this morning. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We are here to worship that God, that God who is Father of all, creator God, loving God, faithful God. And it's so good for you to be here and to share with us. We are so looking forward to seeing what God is going to do in us and through us this morning. One of the great things that's been happening over the last while is that God has not stopped working. He is alive and he is active in his church as individuals and as his people. And one of the amazing things that we've seen over the last few weeks is to hear the testimonies and stories of people within the fellowship who want to testify about what God's been doing through lockdown. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to hear from Patrick and from Lisa, and they're going to share their testimony with us this morning. Over to Patrick and Lisa. Hi there. Uh, Mark has asked Lisa and I to record a short testimony of just our sort of life experiences and challenges through lockdown and just how God has been there for us and has been uh, just, yeah, working in our lives. Um, like everybody, we found the last few months very challenging and unsettling at times um, and very often tinged with sadness when you hear the heartbreaking stories of those who've passed away and those who've lost loved ones. Uh, and, and certainly on this aspect, we are hugely grateful to, to God for keeping us safe and healthy um, and especially those around us as well, our loved ones. Um, during this time, we've, we've had the joys of homeschooling and trying to keep the children in a, a routine and keep them motivated to learn. Uh, Lisa, unfortunately, has had to close down as a childminder for, for three months and then go through the difficult process of, of starting back up, up again, but doing so safely. Um, and I've had to adjust from working from home. Um, like many people, we've uh, we've had to cancel our holidays, but through all of these things, it God, it sort of time and time again keeps showing us real blessings. And um, we've learned just to appreciate family time, going on walks together, just enjoying um, things that we might have just overlooked in the past. Um, I've enjoyed not having to commute to work or travel far afield, and Lisa and I have both enjoyed more family time. And I've also been able to um, concentrate on. Um, settling the kids into their homeschooling, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I was working full time to the same um, extent, which has um, obviously been helpful to the kids. And I've also been able to dedicate all my time to Matthew and Emma. Um, so that's been a real blessing as well. Yeah, and it's, it's been a, quite a period of, of change within us as well. I think God has uh, found ways to work through us. It forced us to slow down at times and and just change our perspective. Um, I know I, um, in the past, quite often fixated on uh, security in life and things like that, and just uh, taking many things out of God's hands. And actually, uh, through all of this, God has given me a fresh perspective, and I find myself more often just going, I, I, I don't care, I'm trusting in, in the Lord for this one, it's going to be fine. And, and having this kind of newfound confidence, not in my own plans, but the fact that God's protecting us, watching over us, and it's that sort of uh, it's refreshing confidence again in what God has for us and his plans for us. It's been really good. Um, and I think for you... Yeah. I, I also, I'm, I'm a planner. I like to plan ahead. Um, but that can be driven by anxiety. Um, I like to... I can't take one day at a time. I need to know what's happening. And 
in this situation, we've had to take one day at a time and God has really shown me um, and given me peace to be able to take one one day at a time, one step at a time and to really just trust in him in a, a fresh way um, where um, in the, uh, it's maybe been taken for granted before now and um, it's just a, been a, a reminder for me to trust in him fully and to um, leave everything in his hands and it's actually given me more peace um, which seems strange to come out of such trial and times. Yeah, and I think as well, one of the, the other things we've really treasured with the family times is, again, just a chance to reflect on how our children see us as Christians. I think as we, we've always had them heavily involved in the church and heavily aware of the things at least and I do in the church and our faith and our relationships. But we sort of came to realise we hadn't really it sort of evolved our discussions, our time with them in, with regards to our faith and the we realised that we should start now having, trying to have more deeper conversations with them, studying the Bible in a bit more detail, um, going beyond sort of reading and you know going through the usual Bible passages and stories, but actually taking time to try and dissect them. Yep. Um, and, and maybe just focusing on, rather than maybe a Bible character or a, or a specific story like um, creation, Noah's, Noah's Ark, um, as they've got older, they kind of realise, you know, we need to, or we want to, transition more and that was a conversation we actually had at the beginning of lockdown that this was something that we thought was a great opportunity to do and we wanted to really focus on maybe looking at individual verses um and um what how we could apply them and how we have as um adults or or when we were younger have applied them to our life um and what was actually really interesting was we, we downloaded a family devotion app and um every so often we will when we feel time's right, we will look up what that day's um, verse is and we will um, read that verse and talk about it and talk about what it means for us and our lives and the, the kids, they, they, get, they get involved. And actually on Sunday, we were driving to um, just a drive and we decided to open up the app. And on Sunday's app, the verse that Mark read in the morning, take delight in the Lord and he will give you and your heart's desires, Psalm 37 verse four actually was the verse for that day and what was really so I found that really good because I actually I felt like oh I can actually explain what this means because it is a harder verse and we had a, a good discussion on what that meant and we and Patch and I were able to just talk to the kids about how we have maybe applied that verse or how we use that verse um at different stages in our life different decisions we've made and um yeah it, it was a really um, interesting conversation that we're able to have with them um, but thanks for listening to our testimony yeah. and we just pray for your health for your safety and we keep everyone we miss everyone and we keep everyone in our prayers thank you amazing how incredible is it to hear those stories of people that we love and know so well their families, people that are around our church, and to see what God is doing in them has been uh, such a blessing. Thank you uh, to Patrick and Lisa for that, uh, and to the kids as well for being part of that. I'd love to pray for us now as a church, as we enter into this time of worship, as we put Jesus first and central, and as we come into his presence. And let us just pray together. God, we thank you that you are an awesome God. We thank you that you have created all the good things that we have. We thank you for your provision over us. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your compassion. We thank you for your faithfulness which has shown us all the way through our lives and in particular through these difficult times. And God, as we come into this place where we can worship you, we thank you for the freedom to do that. We thank you for the love that you've shown us. And we pray this morning that your Holy Spirit will fill us up to the brim. That as we worship you, it will be an outpouring of your Spirit, our love towards you. And as we share with one another, wherever we are today, Lord, unify us by your Spirit. May you be pleased with our worship. 
May you be pleased with our conversations. May you be pleased with our prayers as we seek your face in this place today. And God, we come to you as your children and we ask that your arms will be open to us and we come with contrite hearts, hearts that desire to know you more and more. And Lord, we put ourselves in your hands today. We offer our lives to you and we ask that you will use us, you'll transform us. And by your spirit, we will know that your presence is with us, all around us and within us. And Lord, as we come to sing your praises now, would you embody our praises? We long to worship you. We long to tell you how much we love you. And we long to know your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Greg and the band are going to play two songs. They're going to sing, Come, Join the Song, and then Stronger. And they're going to sing those together. And then after they're finished, Mark will come and bring God's word to us this morning. Let's sing together. Join the song, lift your voice as heaven and love give praise. Fall to your knees at the feet of the song of the one true God. Love and 
are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is written. Thank you. This is a significant time for the church. Everything about the way that we have typically done church has been shaken up. It's been turned on its head. At first, I think there was a sense of frustration and despair that we couldn't carry on in the way that we had always done. But as the weeks of this lockdown turned into months, and as the church had to develop and change the way it sought to operate and the way we sought to share our message, we found that we'd been forced into operating in a way that actually is far more fruitful than we'd ever anticipated. Every church that has had to adapt to online services, etc., etc., seems to be reporting the same thing. That compared with the congregation, the physical congregation that used to gather in our building on a Sunday morning, now in the region of two to three times that number are logging in to our services online. It's as if God is using this time to shake up and transform the church and the way it operates to make the church more fruitful. It means now that those who were unable to come to the building on a Sunday morning, maybe the housebound, maybe those who, for various reasons, the prospect of entering into a building full of people was just too intimidating a prospect. It means that those people now feel they can participate fully in the worship of the church. It means maybe for those who've never in their lives set foot inside a church building, but something inside them says, I want to know about this Jesus. I want to know about Christianity. But the prospect of just walking into a church is too intimidating for me. What are they going to be like? What are they going to do? Am I going to stand out like a sore thumb because I don't know what to do? Now these people have easy access to a church service and they can watch this service. You can watch this service for months before you ever think, now I feel comfortable about coming into the building because I know what I'm coming into. It even means for those who've been part of this church, part of this congregation, committed followers of Jesus for years, actively involved. And if you are one of those people, you know that as a church we say, hey, as Christians, the story of Jesus is good news and we should be sharing the good news. And that's where all our hearts sink. And we go, oh, I know I should be sharing the good news. But, oh, this is where I start to get burdened with guilt about how do I share my faith in a way that isn't cringeworthy, in a way that isn't off-putting, and going to really just get people turned off rather than attracted to Christ. Well, God has now given us a much more simple, gentle, and helpful way to share our faith. There is all this Christian teaching now online. So if we see anything from this church or from any other church that we know and respect that we feel is helpful and is a blessing, now we just share it online. And our friends have an easy, non-threatening opportunity to check in with what we are sharing. 
and they're free to access it if they want, when they want. And there are numerous stories of people being drawn to Christ in this time just through that gentle way of us sharing our faith. So, even as lockdown eases, and hopefully in time we open up the building again on a Sunday, and we have a congregation again here present with us in this building, we're going to continue providing streamed Sunday services. It's a no-brainer, really, for all the reasons I've just mentioned. Yet it's taken something like this current situation for God to shake us up and make us do it. So really, what I'm saying is, along with everyone else, the church has been shaken up through this recent time. But as the pieces from the shake-up start now to settle, God has shaken his church into something more than it was. And so this morning, I want to briefly reflect on the passage in John chapter 17, where John prays for his followers. And I want us to ask ourselves, as his church is being reformed, reformed by God. And as we know that the Bible tells us that Jesus intercedes for his children, the church, I want us to glean what at this time Jesus might be praying for us right now at this new season in the church's life. I want us to reflect on the passage in John 17, verses 11 through to 19 because that's where Jesus prays for his followers. And I want us to ask ourselves, what is Jesus praying for his children, the church, at this time? Well, the first thing that he's praying for us from John 17 is he's praying for our protection. He says in verse 15, my prayer Jesus says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Now, the Bible is absolutely clear, beyond a doubt, the devil has been defeated. Do I hear an amen? The devil has been defeated through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Now, we must always remember that. But Jesus does not, therefore, dismiss him or his influence totally. He recognizes the opposition that the enemy can still cause. As, as a theologian, Oscar Kuhlman, really helpfully put it, he said, in the Second World War, the success of D-Day ensured the outcome of the war. But the war nonetheless continued for a time. The victory was assured, but the mopping up operations continued until VE Day. Similarly, the victory at the cross was D-Day. The victorious outcome is now assured, but the mopping up operations still continue until Christ's return. And so the enemy is still taking pot shots at the believers. So Jesus prays for our protection because the enemy will still try to discourage us in these days, will still try to encourage us, discourage us through this period where folks' lives are turned upside down. Well, please remember, if you are at all discouraged, please remember these two things. One, the enemy has been defeated. And two, Jesus cares for you and he prays for you in your struggles. So, Jesus is praying for our protection. The next thing he's praying for, secondly, he's praying for our unity. Verse 11, he says, protect them so that they may be one as we are one. Talking about him and his father. 
The devil could not defeat the mission of Jesus on this earth because he could not break the unity of the Son with the Father, though he tried. Our unity as a church will be a victory over the devil. The enemy would want at this time to hinder the work and the ministry of the church. But what has become clear is that though the buildings may have been closed for weeks, the church has been open, and the church has been active, and the church has been growing. So God is praying for protection, and He's praying for unity. And actually, with regard to unity, what's more is in this time of uncertainty and real frailty, and actually we just heard it in Patrick and Lisa's testimony, in this time of frailty and uncertainty, we have found that unable to rely on ourselves anymore, we've had to rely on God more. And actually, there's even more to it than that. We've felt more real with one another because we've felt vulnerable. And actually, we've drawn closer to God, and we've drawn closer to one another through this period. What the enemy wanted to see hinder the church, God has used to strengthen it and draw it closer to Him and to one another. So may we not lose that close bond, that deeper bond that has formed over these recent months. And may others be drawn to the loving heart of God by seeing the loving heart that exists in the church between us as brothers and sisters. So he prays for protection, he prays for unity, and then he prays for joy. Verse 13, so that they, that's us, the followers of Jesus, may have the full measure of my joy within them, he prays. And when you think of the circumstances that Jesus was facing as he made this prayer, it's remarkable that he can talk of wanting his followers to experience his joy. He knows he's about to endure the most appalling suffering, his trial, his false accusation, his assault, and his crucifixion and cruel death. And yet he talks of, I want them to have my joy. I remember having the privilege of hearing a pastor speak who'd been a pastor in a country where Christians were persecuted and the church had to exist in secret. And he'd spent 14 years in jail and in labor camps for his refusal to renounce his Christian faith. He was beaten, he was tortured, he was bent because he was unable to stand up straight because of the assaults that he'd faced. But as he stood there, he talked of how when he lay down on his mat at night and prayed to God, he said, my heart would soar with hope and with excitement and with joy because my future was secure, no matter what they tried to do to me. He could talk of joy in the most horrendous of situations as Jesus talked of joy in the most horrendous situation. Now, that doesn't make any sense in the world's eyes. This isn't a joy that comes and goes like the ups and downs of our emotions. It's a joy that only makes sense to the believer. This is a joy that is with us for eternity, even through the downs and the sorrows of life, because we have an eternal hope that something not something. That's something that people are searching for. But we have a hope that that something is our God, is our Father, is our hope, is our rock, is our security. And it can never, He can never be taken away from, from us. So, God prays 
Uh, Jesus prays for our protection, our unity, our joy. And finally, he prays for our growth. Verse 17, he says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. That word sanctify comes from the Hebrew root word meaning separate. It's referring to an increasing willingness to separate ourselves from the values of the world in order to adopt God's values for us. And you know, I think that is something that God is increasingly doing at this time. More people are turning to, are hanging on, are being challenged and changed by God's Word. God is challenging people more in the church and out with the church at this time, challenging us to turn to His Word to provide our way and our direction. Jesus' prayer for us is that we'll live lives that hunger for His truth. He even says that if that is how we live our lives, Jesus says, if you live that way, your lives will give me glory. That's what Jesus says. Verse 10, he says, glory has come to me through them. I find that unbelievably humbling. That Jesus could say, your life gave me glory. I want some of that. So, let me just finish by saying, God is doing a new thing in his church at this time. And Jesus is praying for us that we'll be hungry, that we'll be willing, that we'll be available, that we'll be responsive. He's praying for us that if we will be open to those things, that we are hungry, willing, available, responsive, he says, I'm praying for you, for your protection, for your unity, for your joy, for your growth. Jesus is praying that for us. And if that is Jesus' will for us, then these things can and will happen. He will continue to build his church. And that's you and me. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So let's move forward into more of what Jesus has for us. And as Irene would say, come on, <laughs> Irene. What do you want to see in our church and in our lives? Do you feel you've been shaken up? Do you feel you've been moved? Do you feel that you've been changed in this time? Can I encourage you this week to be sharing your faith, what God has done in you? with the people round about you. Yeah, tell them about what's going on online. Tell them about the things that have been happening, but share Jesus with someone. How amazing is it that he prayed for us, Jesus prayed for us. And to have that joy and that fullness is just incredible. And we can have that as Christians and we can share that as believers in him. We're gonna finish our service by singing together and the band are going to sing a lovely song called yet not i but through christ in me so wherever you are why don't you stand up or get your hands up and let's sing together let's sing together Is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no point for heaven now to gain. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my faith and my peace. To this
service is completed but please join us on our zoom conversations and if you're on facebook there should be a wee link for you to get into the zoom um the zoom room come and join with us it would be really good to get to know you and as mark was saying earlier this is a place if you don't know us get to know us Come and see us, see what we're like face to face when we're in those wee boxes on Zoom. Come and join with us. We would love to have you as part of our fellowship. I have a lovely benediction that I'd love to speak over you now. And it's from 1 Thessalonians. It says this, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and everyone else. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in his presence, in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes with all his holy ones. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.